Hi, so good to see you. This is Lunch with Laura. I hope you guys had a great weekend. Um, just a quick announcement. We are going to be changing our Lunch with Laura from Monday through Thursday to Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So we're shaving it down to three days. So just so you know, um, we're just t still tweaking a little bit here and there. But today we're talking about an update for Adrian Bellion and um, my, I'm naming it <laughs> uh, The Other Baby Mama's Not the Boss of Me. And um, I, uh, the update is that Adrian and uh, Israel Hutin got married over this past weekend. And uh, the first thing that kind of dropped in my spirit after that, um, I said, okay, I, I knew that they were going to get married sometime this month if they were going to go through with it, um, with their original plans. And uh, despite the issue with, um, that's going on with um, Israel Hutin and this other young lady who allegedly claims that he fathered uh, two of her children, one of which is a five-year-old little boy, and then another one is a two-year-old little boy. And, um, you know, as you know, Israel just got a divorce over the you know, past, I guess, year and a half. Um, he didn't really disclose what date he actually got a divorce, but I believe it was, it's over the past eight months he's gotten a, a divorce. I'm sorry, over the past 18 months, rather, he's gotten a divorce. And I thought to myself, wow, um, what example can we extract from that? You know, if, we, if we're using them as a case study, you know, what's the really important point that I want you to uh, walk away with today? And that is, I had a um, post a few months ago, I'm sorry, yeah, a few weeks ago, rather, that said, um, don't stay in a mistake just because you spent a lot of time making it. And my twist for Adrian is don't stay in what could be a mistake just because you made it publicly, you know. So, you know, don't stay on a road that you have a lot of reservations about just because you've made it public and you don't want to backpedal because you think it's embarrassing. That's the bottom line um, because that is probably one of the weakest reasons you could use to stay down a course that you may not be sure about. You know, that doesn't mean that you have to do a, a total 180 about face, but, you know, if you need to put on the brakes and take a minute to really step back and observe and really analyze on a deeper level and maybe get other folks involved, whether it is a counselor or whether it is trusted family members that you know that have your best interest at heart, um, that really help you to sort out your feelings Make sure that you're doing the work that you need to do up front to deal with all the issues if you're thinking about getting married. Um, and don't just sweep it under saying that, hey, you know, well, I'm the one with the ring and she's not. So, you know, she's not going to be anything that's going to be a real issue. Or the flip side of that is, you know, I'm, I'm not going to let, you know, anybody else dictate what I'm going to do and blah, blah, blah. And the bottom line is, whether you like it or not, um, Israel Hutton opened up himself <laughs> to have allow this person to have influence in his life because allegedly he has children with her. That's the bottom line. You know, she's the other baby mama. You're going to have to deal with her. That, that's just it. You know, he gave her the keys the day that she got pregnant. That's just what it is, you know, and we all know, you know, according to the reports, these are live births. These kids are here, <laughs> you know, and so, you know, you can't ignore the mom. Now, you, obviously, you don't want her to be ruling and reigning in your relationship. Um, and so, you know, I don't know what type of terms they may have come with, if, with that particular young lady, if at all. You know, I don't know if they're totally ignoring her and just allowing the attorneys to deal with it or whatever they're doing. Um, you know, when you're in a situation where, you know, your, your soon-to-be husband, you know, has kids, you know, you're going to have to deal with the mom. And so if you can do that in the best way possible, again, I'm not saying that you have to suck up. I'm not saying that you have to make a fool of yourself or allow somebody to be your, or allow somebody to use you as a doormat. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying you ought to suffer somebody else's abuse because they think it's fun to, you know, slap you around. <laughs> I'm not saying that at all. But you know, if you're not at a place where you think that you can deal with this and deal with this other person in a, in a civil way, then I really think you ought to sit back and, and think about this particular situation. Think about the timing um, of you getting married and um, think about your relationship with these kids. Because if, you know, if the other mom is feeding, you know, all this negativity, 
um, you know, especially when you have boys, you know, boys get up, grow up, and they grow up, they get nice and strong, <laughs> you know, and so um, it's, it's really something to make sure that you come to terms with, that you understand, that you have the skill set to deal with, the pressure of it. Um, and I'm not saying that, you know, Israel is a bad man. I'm not saying that at all. Um, I still listen to his music, his worship. He is still operating in all of his gifts. He is still anointed. Um, and I think that he is a wonderful musician. I think that he brings down the sounds from heaven and he expresses it in such a way. Okay, sorry about that. And, God, and he really expresses it in a way that God really has his hand on him. He's absolutely anointed. He's still operating in his gifts. And I think that, you know, he's so, such a talented person and really loves the Lord in his heart. Um, I've just cautioned, you know, them. I hope that moving forward, and I really wish the best for them. And I hope that moving forward that she does not take the stance. Well, you know, if we have kids, our kids are, are going to be number one and first and, you know, never mind the other kids. And so I hope she doesn't take that stance. But the bottom line is don't become... Don't use this us against them, you know, us, her, you know, Adrian and Israel rallying against this other young lady who claims that uh, Israel is the father of her two sons. You know, don't use that as a situation where you use it as fuel to say it us against them. Well, I'm going to stick with it, stick with him because, you know, we're going to fight against her or, you know, we have her as our focus, you know, to be against and we're going to be happy no matter what. You know, if, if, if you're using that for fuel, but you still have a, a situation where, you know, you really should pull back and take a look, irrespective, it doesn't matter with her, you know, it doesn't matter what she's saying and what she might be, you know, trying to stir up. The bottom line is these are the dyna dynamics. You need to make sure that you have the skill set and the, and the ability to be able to deal with the challenges that are likely to come with it. And the second thing is, we, on, on, also on that same road, is don't become a cheerleader. Don't use that. Sometimes people use that us against them because they think that knits their relationship closer to their fiance or their new husband. You know, so I hope that Adrian doesn't fall into, well, you know, we're going to fight against this other young lady and it's going to unify me and Israel. And so that, that usually also is a shaky, shaky, shaky foundation to um, really use, again, as fuel, as you know, logs on the fire as gasoline on the fire, really. <laughs> um, because if you're using that type of negativity to hold you together, then you're going to have to keep that neg same negativity or increase it to remain, to keep that same bonding or to, or to try to make it stronger. And you don't want to start off on that road. It is a, a really shaky, bad, unstable foundation that you always have to be in a mode of fighting against somebody else to feel closer to whoever you believe is supposed to love you. And I'm not saying that he doesn't, you know, I'm, I'm sure that they absolutely both believe 1000% that they love one another, whatever their definition of love is. And that's, an, that's another thing, you know, <laughs> make sure that your definition of love is the same as his and vice versa. And that was one hard lesson that I had to learn in my own marriage that his definition of love is nothing similar at all to mine. <laughs> So, you know, just make sure that you're not using that type of fuel, that type of negativity, that type of anger to try to knit and glue you and um, help you to grow closer together. It always should be something that's very positive. It should be common cores of beliefs and interests that you have that are the glue that holds you together, that knit you closer together as you grow older together, not fighting against somebody else. So I hope that you find that helpful. Um, this was actually a different video <laughs> than I had planned to do this morning. But since I learned that they had gotten married, I do wish them the very best. I hope that um, all the future children that, are, that may be born are born healthy and happy. And um, it, it is a situation that's not impossible, but that Adrian has the patience and the skill set um, to allow her husband to be parents to three sets of kids, because <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> you know, he's he's gonna be he's gonna have to give love and attention to three sets of kids, and that's not easy. It's not impossible, but it's not easy. So she's gonna have to be a really exceptional wife in order to do that. So enjoy the rest of your lunch. This is Lunch with Laura. I will see you not tomorrow, but I will see you on Wednesday. I will probably do a video tomorrow. It just won't be at lunchtime. 
all right? So I'm going to start experimenting on doing videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays on different times of the day. So enjoy your lunch. I'm going to figure out what I'm going to have. So take care.